y'all. Coming to you from Jacksonville, Florida. This is GovLove, a podcast about local government brought to you by engaging local government leaders. I'm Ben Kittleson, manager at RefTelus and GovLove co-host. We've got a great episode for you today. We're going to be talking leadership and the role of the deputy manager. Uh, but first, the best way to support GovLove is to become uh, an ELGL member. Engaging local government leaders is a professional association engaging the brightest minds in local government. And your membership helps support this podcast. So if you want to hear more great conversations like the one we're having today, uh, go become a member at ELGL.org. Uh, you can also follow GovLove on LinkedIn. We've got a new page there, or, or new-ish page, I guess now. Um, so uh, if you give us a follow, you'll never miss a new episode, and you can also connect with other GovLove listeners. Uh, now, let me introduce today's guest. Uh, Chelsea Jackson is the Deputy City Manager for the city of Douglasville, Georgia, a position she's been in since July 2023. Uh, previously, she served Douglasville as the Assistant City Manager uh, for about five years and as Operations Manager for two years. Uh, she's also worked at the city of uh, Smyrna, Georgia, where she started as a local government management fellow. So with that, Chelsea, welcome to Govlo. Thank you so much for joining us. Hello. I'm excited to be here. First time on a podcast. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Did I pronounce Smyrna right? I always uh, get, get intimidated by the spelling of that city. <laughs> uh, Smyrna. I say Smyrna. Some people Smyrna, do say Smyrna. Smyrna. Yeah, but I say I think it's the southern in me. Southern. Smyrna. <laughs> Smyrna. Okay. That's, I'll, I'll note that for the future. That's my first line error comes for you is uh, proper pronunciation <laughs> <It's fine>. of that. <laughs> All right, so we have a tradition on the podcast to do a, a lightning round to get to know our, our guests a little bit better. Um, so my first question for you, uh, what was the first concert that you went to? My first concert, it was actually, it will be a festival. So in Atlanta, um, they used to have a huge festival called Music Midtown. And they would have, it's in um, Piedmont Park, which is a huge park yeah. in Midtown Atlanta. And they would set up, I want to say it was like two to three stages and so it would be performers just performing at the same time on those stages. So I, my friend snagged tickets from somewhere and asked if I was available. And of course, I'm going to be available for Music Midtown because yeah. um, any other time I can't afford those tickets. And so this was probably this was probably like 10 or 11 years ago when I first moved into the metro Atlanta area. And I went and I had a ball. I saw everyone from uh, what Blink-182. All the, and that's what I like about Music Midtown is because they went all the way like old school to like today's hit. So like I saw Blink-182 all the way to like Bruno Mars. And oh, it wow. was the best. It was a lot because it was a two day um, music festival, but it was the best show. And I got to see so many people. I just had so much fun now. I didn't have any sales service to get an Uber at that time. I think I walked yeah. 10 blocks <laughs> to get <laughs> to have service, but it was all worth it. And I have like some dirty Chuck Taylors to prove it all. To prove, like, yeah, to prove it. That's <laughs> awesome. Oh, man, music festivals are intimidating, especially a multi-stage. Like, oh, that, that that's a lot. That's overwhelming. Yeah, <laughs> it, it's a lot of people. And I, I think yeah. I'm a little claustrophobic. So having that many people around me, but I just tried to like zone, get in the zone and like just listen to the music and look at the performers. And yeah. it was really good. So worth that's it. That's awesome. That's awesome. That's a fun first concert. <laughs> All right. The next line question for you. What, what book are you currently reading? So this is a really good question because I stopped reading for probably about two or three years because I read so much at work. Mm. And so I'm just getting back and I used to love reading growing up. So I'm just getting back into it. So um, one of the professional development books I'm reading is called The One Minute Manager Meets the Monkey. Hmm. And it was a recommendation from one of my coworkers. And it's a really good recommendation. So good that like I bought the book again and gave it to another coworker for us to read and discuss. But basically, I'm in the beginning pages of it. And from what I can gather, it talks about how being a manager, how people always come to you and they're saying they're either complaining or coming to you with something that's wrong, that needs changing. And as the manager, you're saying, OK, I'll handle it. Thank you for telling me. Instead of you like being encouraging and pushing the person that told you about the issue or told you about the monkey to oh. actually go forth and solve the issue themselves themselves. So, Oh, interesting. Yes. Yeah, so it's, and, and so it was a recommendation. And so I'm, I'm thinking of myself as like a manager and saying, yes, for some people, I totally, I'm like, don't worry about it. I got it. I'll definitely handle it. And I'm putting that monkey on my back when I have a lot of monkeys already on my back. <laughs> So I'm excited to like get through the rest of it. And it's a short read. It's about yeah. 100 pages, very small book. Um, so I'm excited to get through that and have some discussions with my coworkers about it. 
Oh, that's fun. Yeah. Yeah. You don't need any more monkeys when you're in a position like yours. <laughs> you're all, you're all full. That's funny. I like that. All right. Then my next line of question for you, uh, cake or pie? Um, cake. I like strawberry cake or a pound strawberry. cake. Strawberry. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> or a strawberry pound cake. <laughs> oh, yeah, now I'm hungry. Oh man. Yes. That sounds great. <laughs> All right, then my, my last line of question for you. Uh, where do you go for inspiration? Uh, vacation? No, I'm joking. <laughs> I think that counts, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, honestly, yeah. When I need to like refuel, I don't go to the gas station. I go to the beach. <laughs> I like to I like to really take my vacations. That's the one thing um, people know about me is I, I take my vacations and I look towards that for, you know, just to decompress, but also to gain some inspiration and to, with inspiration is those things of me being grateful Mm -hmm. just for being in like the position that I am and being here. So my vacations are, you know, they revive me. And then also um, I have a wonderful city manager. So I'll go to her with like questions or go to her with ideas that I have. And she pushes me to say, yeah, hey, that sounds great. Or let's think about it another way. Or yes, you're doing a good job. Go ahead. Run off into the sunset. So it's always good to have, you know, a good city manager that you can bounce ideas off of and that inspires you to continue doing better. Yeah, I love that. I love that. Um, What's your favorite beach town that you go to or or do you have a go to one? I really don't have a go-to one, but I will say, and this may be the least favorite for everyone. I don't know because it's busy, but I love Miami Beach. Oh yeah, um, yeah. I just love Miami. Beautiful. Just yeah. yeah, Miami is just pretty. Like yeah. being in Atlanta and being like landlocked, and you don't really see water too often. Yeah, <laughs> going into Miami and you're just like, wow. You cross over the bridge and you're like, look at the water, look at the buildings, and the people are like happy and they're running along the beach. Yeah. So any beach is nice, but I Miami. Every time I'm like in my Uber going across to get to the South Beach part, I'm just like, wow. I like the city. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I, I remember thinking that the first time I went. I was like, there's no way it can be as good as people say. And then you're like, oh, okay, this is beautiful. This is <laughs> pretty amazing. It really, it really is. It really is a really gorgeous um, beach city. I really like it. Yeah, that's awesome. All right. And then um, I was like asking folks, you know, how they ended up in local government. So, you know, I, I talked a little bit about some of your, your career stops in the, the bio, but what was your path to local government? How did you end up in this field and, and how did you end up in the position you're in today? Yeah, so I always wanted to be an attorney. And yeah. funny story, even to, to to this day, my mom, when I call her on the caller ID, it says Attorney Chelsea. <laughs> <laughs> she's a person, she, she's going to speak it into existence. Um, yeah. So it still says that to this day. So I wanted to be an attorney. Me and my friends, when I went to college, it's like, we're going to go be attorneys, whether it's like corporate, tax attorney, something. And it was around the time where it was a recession. And so they were kind of discouraging people to not go to law school because it's like you can go to law school, you'll end end up six figures in debt and you won't be making six figures at that time. So it's like, why go? Um, And these were the stories I I was hearing from some attorneys and stuff. And I just said, okay, well, I just really want to write policies and change the world. And one attorney said, Chelsea, you do not have to go to law school to be the change and to like write policies. And I was like, hmm, I kind of knew that, but like, it's an attorney. <laughs> and and um, he was like, well, you know, look at other routes, like look into grad school. And, you know, I, I knew about grad school. A few, a few of my friends had already like, started. So I started looking and I fell into this master's of public administration class at KSU, um, mm-hmm. Kennesaw State University. And I was like, wow, I really like this. And And like my mom and my sister, my grandmother, they always worked in public service. So mm-hmm. honestly, no one in my family has worked in the private sector. I just really wanted to be an attorney and like, you know, write policies and stuff. And I probably would have ended up in the public sector anyway. So um, started at KSU, I finish and I'm looking for jobs and I run across a position in Smyrna, Georgia, and it Feds local government management fellow. And mm-hmm. previously to working in Smyrna, I had an internship in Savannah, Georgia, and I worked in the court system. So I had knew about local government because I had the internship for close to a year. So mm-hmm. I, I knew about local government a little bit. And so I said, well, hmm, this position says like, you can write policies, you'll work with department directors on different things, you'll update some policies, procedures, you'll work with mayor and council. And I said, well, that sounds fun. And, and my friend had already had also found the position. And she said, this sounds just like you. And mm-hmm. I said, well, I'll apply. 
and I applied for the fellowship and I was awarded the fellowship in Smyrna and the rest is history. I thought I was going to be an attorney and ended up in local government. And I wrote a few policies, not even a few. I wrote a lot of policies in Smyrna. <laughs> and to this day, I don't have to write another policy. <laughs> yeah. It's like you write so many and you see the process of everything. It's like, I will write one if yeah, I have yeah. to, but I think I've done what needs to be done. And I have that experience. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's fair. Yeah, you, you, you've checked that box. Yes, I have checked that box. <laughs> was there something in that, that first job in Smyrna that you, you worked on and you're like, oh, this is the career for me. This I'm going to stick with this. Like, this is really like what, worth sticking yeah. with. Yeah, so, so, the, so the thing, and it was a little controversial, controversial, and it was like a no smoking policy, but like a no smoking on city grounds on right of way type policy. Mm. And, you know, it was like, okay, who knows about a right of way? (laughs) So I I was writing the policy and it was from, from the citizens. We heard a little conversation, you know, the conversations coming in from council meeting, like, okay, where is the right of way? Or are you going to have signs for this? Or you can't stop me from smoking. It's smoking. Um, The smoke just goes into the air. And so I had to write that policy. I had to present it to mayor and council. There were a lot of changes to that policy, as you can imagine, trying to, you know, say no smoking on, you know, government grounds or, you know, right away and stuff. And I just saw how writing a policy or doing some type of procedure actually affected citizens and yeah. people. Mm-hmm. And so starting from like start all the way to finish, it was like, okay, you're trying to do something that has a positive quality of life on individuals, but you're mm-hmm. all you're also stepping on the toes of those individuals who want to um who who want to smoke just <laughs> to yeah. drop that plain and clear. And and so that was the first project I said, wow, I I can make a difference. Yeah. Now it, the difference may not be something that will always make everyone happy, but I can see directly me doing the research, writing the policy, presenting it, making the amendments and the changes to it that was needed, going all the way into, okay, we need signs now. Can you find us signs? Can you design them? Can you work with public works to get these printed and where they should go? Um, And, you know, do we need to do a social media campaign to let people know? And what's the fine on this? So have we Mm -hmm. talked to public safety? So it was just seeing so many. It's like a a octopus. Like, okay, you have eight arms trying to make sure you check every box for everything. But at the end of the day, you're seeing your result. And that's the one thing I always tell people about local government is... For all other governments, you are making a difference, but seeing that direct difference day to day, that's local Mm -hmm. government. You can actually see that change that you make immediately, pretty much. Yeah. No, that's beautiful. Like, yeah, you you pass that policy one day and the next year out there, you're seeing the signs and seeing how it's changing the community. Yeah. So So it was, yeah, it was was different, but it it was good. And I still remember, remember that. Of course, all of my projects weren't as large as that, but getting to work on that was, was great. It was a great experience. That's an awesome project for a, a fellow too. Like you, you could see all the different things that it would touch within the organization and, and, and how that research could then be implemented. That's really cool. Yeah. It, it definitely helped me even to this day when people, cause we have um, fellows that have been in the city of Douglasville and interns and I always let, tell them sit down and think about every department that it'll touch. Yeah. Make sure you're not forgetting that and make sure you have all the players at the table. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, that that's a good transition to a question I had for you. Is that, uh, I saw that you had done a presentation, I think, for an ICMA or maybe a, a Georgia City County Management Association conference on on the pipe, you know, creating the pipeline for future leaders within the profession, which is something that ELGL is a, a big fan of and, and something we talk about a lot. So, what what, what do you think local governments can do on that front? Is it uh, you know how do they part? Is it felt the, like a, something like a fellowship? Is it what, what are your your kind of thoughts on on developing that pipeline? I, I think it's a lot of things. So one of the things, yes, fellowship completely. I love that. I am a product of the ICMA uh, Management Fellowship, and I love that. And it got me my start to where I am today. But then also in, in the city of Douglasville, we started internship programs. Mm-hmm. So we have an internship program, which every department 
can have an intern. So you have all the way from like community relations all the way to public safety that can get an intern. And they can be um, a, a sophomore, junior, senior. Um, sometimes we accept freshmen, but we want them to have a, a little bit of that coursework. And they come in and we do summer, fall, and spring internships. Mm. And they come in and they it's a great wage. And they have a... They have a timeline, but they also have like a syllabus that we create for them. Oh, wow. Yes. So they can hit basically everything that they need to and know about local government during whether it's the, I think summer is about eight weeks and then the spring and fall, of course, they're a little longer. So we have started our internship program. And I remember we had a young lady come in and she was a senior. She spent one semester in our internship and she was working in community development. She knew nothing about community development, about being a planner. At that time, I want to say it was about 2020 or 2021. It was just tough to hire for like anyone in community development because Mm -hmm. if you work in the private sector, you can go there and you have a flexible schedule. The salary is a little better, of course. And she, she became our planner. So she had started, yeah, she had started college early and so she started, I think she started college when she was 16. So she was graduating when she was 19. We had a 19 year old planner. Oh, wow. Working for us. <laughs> yes. Um, she was so, like, so smart. She, she had learned everything from the bottom all the way until, like, she's presenting at council meetings and everything. So building that pipeline, like, that is so important. And yeah. telling and, and me being on this podcast and telling that story mm-hmm. is so important. So we've had that internship for some years and I want to say four years. So, and we've been able to hire probably about six or seven interns in those permanent roles. Mm. So we've had interns that have come on as accountants um, who have just, you know, got their degree in finance or in accounting. Like I said, we had the planner um, intern that came on. We had some people that worked under um, Keep Douglasville Beautiful, like the Keep America affiliate. So, yes. So that's one way to build that pipeline and you're helping build their career from the start of, in local government. So that's yeah. all they know. And so you're helping them build that and mold that and tell that story. And it's easier too, because we're, we're coaching them along the way because they started as an intern and we're providing that mentorship. And that's the thing with our internship, we make sure that when we pair them in departments, they don't necessarily get paired with the director. Mm-hmm. They get paired with a person that has the time and the capacity to actually coach them and mentor mm-hmm. them through. Because as you know, I don't know if you've ever had an internship, but if you do- It's a lot of work, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of work if you have an intern. And and if you're the intern, you want someone who you can basically like go to and seek advice from. Mm-hmm. So we're, we're very strategic when it comes to making sure- Okay, we know it's the we know it's a department, but it doesn't have to be the director. It can be the manager. It can be a coordinator that can actually oversee that intern to make sure they get where they need to go. So internships are great. Um, fellowships we've had where myself and my city manager and our assistant city manager, and a couple more other people, we have um, really created a relationship with um, one of the universities nearby, yeah. and they have a ICMA um, chapter. Mm -hmm. student chapter there. And so what we do is they have us come in and we we just went a couple of months ago and we talked to their MPA students um, about ethics. They was like, oh, we just want to have, you know, a panel about ethics. So we came in and talked to them about that. But that's one way of, because they asked us about our position and how we deal with ethics on a day-to-day basis. But that's how we were telling our story. And so at the end of it, I said, hey, um, we're hiring. Yeah. (laughs) So it, it's us getting out and actually showing our faces about local government. And so people can know, you know, local government is actually cool. It's one of oh, those yeah. cool jobs <laughs> as well. Um, so, yeah, it's the internships, telling the stories, going out to the colleges to recruit. Um, and really that word of mouth, it it has really, you know, helped us create that pipeline to have some, some successful people at the city of Douglasville. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, every every one of those interactions, presentations is a, a recruitment opportunity. I, I like that uh, that philosophy. Yeah. Always say we're hiring. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of, yeah, no. Um, so your internship program. Um, can can you, if, if a city or you know someone listening wanted to implement maybe a similar 
they have ideas around us or wanted to do something similar to what, what you guys are doing is it sound, it sounds like it's somewhat centrally managed, but you guys are obviously matching folks with departments that want interns. Can yeah. you maybe talk more about like, how do you structure it? How do you kind of manage it? And then I mean, I don't know, we don't have to get into maybe all the details of the syllabus, but maybe some of the highlights of like what you try to expose folks to during their time with the city. Oh yes. So, um, one of our departments that they do a really good job is our community relations department and our communications manager. She, but oversees the interns because she has the capacity and she just has an ability to really connect people. Mm-hmm. So um, what we do is how we structure it is HR does a lot of the initial recruiting. And so mm-hmm. we recruit every, you know, Metro Atlanta has a lot of colleges and universities and technical yeah. schools. So we push that out to their job boards. We reach out to like the deans of their colleges and say, Hey, criminal justice, we have an yeah. internship, you know, in our public safety department, you know, hey, graphic design, we have something in community relations. So we, we send all that out at once and, you know, all those job postings. So it usually it's about, you know, we end up getting about 10 to 13 um, mm-hmm. interns. So once they're in, HR does a really good job at like help building them and saying, hey, this is your group. So if you can't lean on your director or like manager at one, at one point in time, you can lean on each other. So yeah. we try to make it like that type of internship. So they come in and basically the first week we give them an entire overview. So they are onboarding, but we, we take them around to every facility. They talk to um, all of our directors, our city manager. They're invited to our department um, head meeting. And they really get that general overview of everything. So if the intern is just in community relations, they can't say that they didn't go to the public safety building and they haven't met the chief. So we try to at least expose them all to that. And then afterwards, um, so if it's like a 12 week internship, you know, they have the week one, the general overview. But then they also talk about, hey, start thinking about what project or what policy or procedure you want to implement or change. Mm-hmm. We know on day one or week one, you're not going to be able to identify a policy or know, you know, what type of project you want to do. But within the next like two to four weeks, you yeah. should start seeing some type of, hey, this process could be done a little bit more effectively if we had this, mm-hmm. or I would like to change this policy. So that's what they start doing. They they start, you know, getting into, of course, the day to day. So in community relations, they're meeting with all the department directors who oversee events and graphics and our social media pages. They start learning about our city branding guidelines. Okay. They learn about, you know, the exact process for, you know, an event or wanting in gra- a graphic. And then um, our graphic um, multimedia manager, he'll, you know, pull them in and say, hey, Let's look at this graphic. You know, Parks possibly wants this graphic. So what does this look like? And let's start building and molding it and see what you can create. Mm -hmm. And then after they do that for a little while, you know, do a little handhold and it's like, okay, you got it. I'm going to start having you create graphics on your own. And then don't forget about this project that you have to present at the end to us, but also they have to present to our mayor and council as well. So we really give them that deep um, dive into local government because from start to finish, you're meeting with department directors, city managers, and at the end, you have to present to mayor council about the project or the policy or the procedure that you want to change. That's awesome. That's awesome. What what great experience for those folks. That's you get both the education and then you get to like, actually do something and present. Oh something. yeah. Because awesome. <laughs> sometimes interns are like hiding. I know some at some oh, internships yeah. they're like, hey, make these copies. Or, yeah. hey, can you run and do this? And then, like, you're just hiding and, like, trying not to be seen. Oh, but no, you're definitely going to be seen at the city of Douglasville. We're going to introduce you to who you need to know from start to finish. And then they leave that internship with a letter of recommendation from our HR director, from our city manager. And then, of course, you know, with months and years past, if they still want, you know, some type of other recommendation, they can always reach back to us and we provide that to them as well. That's so cool. Yeah, as someone that had several internships at the beginning of my career, that, I can. That's a that's a, a much better structure than than some of the internships I had, where where you are, yeah. you're not necessarily hiding, but you're you're doing some work that maybe maybe is the highest priority. <laughs> yeah, it's like, can you make copies of all of this? Yeah, and then name them this in the shared drive. <laughs> The number of binders I put together in one of my internships. Yeah. I know I've done that too. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's awesome. Uh, 
Well, I appreciate that that tangent. So one of the, I mean, the main reason I want to have you tangent. on. Sorry. <laughs> no, I love that. I loved it. That, that's I, I, that's a great program and um, it's definitely worth like highlighting. So that, that's, I'm glad I asked. Um, so uh, the main reason I wanted to have you on was talk about kind of the role of the deputy and, and your role um, and kind of how you have approached it and, and kind of the, the things that go into being a deputy manager. Um, so maybe just to, to start, because this, this can look different, uh, you know, organization to organization. What, what is your scope as deputy uh, city manager? So like, what, what are you responsible for? What are the things that, um, that maybe that, that you, that you have to do day to day? Oh, everything. <laughs> <laughs> um, so deputy city manager. So I'll try to keep it like clean. I'll talk about some of the departments that I oversee. So mm-hmm. I directly oversee community relations, economic development, conference center and tourism, information technology, and I am implementing a new department called organizational development, okay. which I'm excited about yeah. because it's a little different from HR. HR is like more compliance things, you know, getting the employees in and recruiting. And then that organization development piece is like helping with the culture and mm. keeping those employees and retaining them. And how can we help develop our employees? So I'm very, very excited to start that. And then um, I have a lot of special projects as well. So I was able to kind of help co-manage a $25 million um, town green and amphitheater project over the last three to four years, all the way from demolishing it to, you know, helping helping with the grand opening series. Um, We're trying to get a hotel project on, mixed use development. So I have a lot of special projects um, and I oversee or I serve as one of the staff liaisons for our development authority. So Mm -hmm. we have industrial economic development and then we have like kind of like that day-to-day business recruitment economic development. I help with that industrial side. Mm -hmm. So um, I do all of that plus other duties as assigned. (laughs) Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. So my city manager was out this week um, at a conference and so I had to step in and actually um, assist with council meeting so mm-hmm. I have to do that um, maybe about four or five times a year, which I like because it puts me in that space as city manager and I get to feel how that position is. But then it's also safe because I get to go back to being deputy city manager as well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Go back to your to your home. Yeah. I love yes. That. To the safeness, to yeah. my <laughs> space. <laughs> so, um, so I'm curious, you know, you know, being a generalist and then being assigned departments to kind of manage, how do you kind of approach, you know, managing an area like, you know, HR always comes to mind or like, there's so much like specialty knowledge and technical knowledge that you might need to be an HR director, but you as like maybe a generalist are kind of managing them at a, at the next level up. So like, what, how do you kind of approach figuring out like, you know, how, how do I want to hold this group accountable where I, I may not know everything about their work, but I need to, you know, you know, uh, manage their work and, and make sure they're meeting the kind of the goals of the organization. So what's what's kind of been your approach for for that? Yes. Yeah, so I kind of have the best of both worlds. So some of my so I have divisions that I directly oversee and I have like departments as well. Mm-hmm. So the divisions that I di- not divisions, the departments that I directly oversee Um, They have department directors, so they're the specialists and I get to lean on them. I get to provide like a general, like you said, a general overview of like the direction from mayor and council as it relates to that department. And then them being the specialists, they get to carry that out with their employees. Mm -hmm. And then for the division, that's a little tougher for me because I only have managers for those divisions. So kind of like you were saying, like I'm I'm serving as a department head in those Mm -hmm. divisions a little bit. Mm -hmm. So I'm having to, of course, I have a vision for mayor and council because our mayor and council is very good at setting out goals every year and a vision for what they want the city to do and accomplish for that year. And so for the divisions, I have to take a deeper dive into Mm -hmm. what are the trends, what are the best practices. Um, I'm bouncing ideas off of the managers that are in that department, but I'm really having to set up, you know, a steady focus for the year for that division. Mm -hmm. Because with the departments, they're they're doing that with their departments because they're they oversee the day to day. But with me with the divisions, I'm having to oversee the day to day Mm -hmm. and I'm having to kind of set that vision forth for them. So um, it's it's a good scale for me though. So yeah. um, it it teaches me a lot because with economic development, I'm I'm having to go in and I'm learning a lot, and I'm having to like I said oversee and guide that. Mm-hmm. So it's helping me, but that's how I pretty much um, I'm able to to balance that and you know be able to get things done. 
Yeah, yeah. Okay, so yeah, so the the areas that have that director, those departments, you're 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 sitting on top. You're helping, you know, relay the vision from elected body. But for the places where you're in the more day to day, it's figuring out how to actually implement it. It sounds like is that is that fair? Oh yes, definitely. Yeah, very cool. Um, so I'm I'm curious uh, about the transition. So you, your first role in uh, Douglasville was uh, I can't remember the title, but it was more. It, it wasn't like an assistant or a deputy. So when you were kind of making that transition from, you know, I, and I, well, I can't remember what your old title was. It might've been operations manager. Is that right? Uh, yes. Operations manager. Going from that to assistant, like what was that transition? Like how did you maybe prepare for that or how did you kind of go through that kind of switch? Well, you know how you're, you're kind of already doing a job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was, that was a little of it. Um, yeah. Cause I can tell you my position as operations manager, I'm still doing a lot of those duties. Yeah. They ju- I just built upon those duties on those duties. Mm-hmm. So the transition for me, I will, I'll, I'll just hone in on like the hardest transition. It yeah. was from going to peer to supervisor. Yeah. And it was trying to say, okay, Hey, we have this peer relationship, but now I'm having to have that supervisory role mm. as well. But the people in my organization, they, they made it very easy. But for me, I think I thought too too hard about it. I thought too much about it when the peer to supervisor transition actually should come organically. If you had a yeah. good relationship with those individuals that you are working with and you know how they work, then you trans... Um, transforming into their supervisor should be that easier transition. It's just, you just find a little balance on how you manage that person. So that's Mm -hmm. something within yourself on how you're going to manage that certain person. But being an internal candidate and going, being interned into somebody's supervisor, you know, when you think about it, people think that it's hard, but now I'm walking through it in my head. It's like, okay, it should be fairly easy because I know exactly how these people work. I know yeah. the pros of their work. I know the cons of their work. I know what grinds their gears. So for <laughs> me, yeah. So now, you know, in hindsight, if I can go back and talk to Chelsea in 2018, I would say, hey, calm down. Remember, you know, these yeah. were your peers. So you know exactly how they work. Um, and I guess that's me getting to giving anybody listening to this, just giving them advice on if you're an internal candidate and you're transitioning from peer to supervisor, don't be so hard on yourself on that mm-hmm. transition. Don't go in on day one to say, hey, I'm your boss. And yeah. what I say goes, because that's not going to be good for the relationship or that organizational culture mm-hmm. that you're trying to maintain. But just go in and let it happen organically. You already know how to work together as peers. So transitioning into their supervisors should also work organically as well. Oh, yeah. Huh. No, that's a really good point that like, you know, you have all this knowledge about the organization, about how people work when you're an internal candidate um, and making that transition. Like, and you should use that, right? (laughs) That's a really good point. But that... I. I don't know, you know, in my day job, when we go into places, there's that, that transition from peer to supervisor can be really difficult for folks and can, oh, yes. can catch up a lot of organizations. So, uh, you know, I don't know if you, if there's more you would add about like how you, how you did that or how you approached it, or maybe some of your lessons learned from, from coming too strong in, the, <laughs> in those first two days. Or, but but um, yeah. that, that does seem like a hard, that can be hard for folks is that, that, that change. Yeah. And you, you hit the nail on the head because like you're, you're coming in internally. So it seems like it should be easy yeah, um, because you have all the knowledge of everyone and the organization. So the one thing I did when I did transition from operations manager to assistant city manager, the directors that I knew that I was going to directly oversee that it wasn't the first week because I was trying to get my own footing and mm-hmm. try not to be the awkward person because I, I got a promotion and all that and just trying to settle into that role. Mm-hmm. I So about the second or third week, I met up with my department directors and we talked about anything. We yeah. talked about their family, their kids, what's going on, what frustrates them, things they wanted to change in the organization. So I made it a very comfortable conversation with them. I didn't go in and put my hand out and say, this is what's going to happen. I really opened it up and said, hey, let's just talk. We can talk about anything. And by the end, it transitioned into 
hey, these are my goals. This mm-hmm. is what I want to do in the upcoming year. This is These are the changes that I want to make. You know, what are your thoughts about this? Yeah. And for some of my directors, yes. I have some directors that literally I love the open format. They want to brainstorm me. And then others, of course, and this is me, you know, trying to be strategic. When I went in to talk to them about, you know, hey, how's your daughter? How's your son? Mm-hmm. I want to see, you know, are would they open up? And keep going or more so like closed. And oh, if, if it is closed, yeah. that is fine. That means, oh, well, great. And then I was able to still transition a little bit into the department and the goals and the objectives. But I knew exactly how to frame the conversation mm. to make them comfortable as well as to make me comfortable for it as well. Oh, and then that's how I made the roadmap continue You know, down the line. It's been almost... Six years, I think, since I've yeah. been in like an assistant and deputy role. So I still, to this day, you know, the department directors who are, you know, open to like having that brainstorming session during every bi-weekly that I have, I still have that. And then those directors who are a little bit more like, oh, yeah, my daughter's good. Okay, this is my goal. I keep it at that. Yeah. And I have, you know, the shorter 30 minute meetings with them, which is fine. And so it's success on both ends. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And and as a manager, I like to not like put myself in any category mm-hmm. um, of being a man. Oh, this is how I manage and this is how I'm going to manage every person. I can honestly mm-hmm. say that I manage every person differently. Yeah. No, I love that. You're kind of meeting people where they're at and, and Definitely. using your emotional intelligence uh, to like to like navigate that. That's 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 probably a, that's a really hard skill, but it sounds like it, <laughs> that can oh, really help tough. with that trend. Yeah. <laughs> I, I definitely see while some, I hear some managers saying, well, this is how I manage and yeah. this is how it goes because it is tough. But then I also think it makes individuals a better manager when you're able to mm. transition to lead and manage people differently. Mm. And it, you know, and you'll see that from that individual blossoming and the organization blossoming. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. That's really cool. Yeah. So what about uh, the switch from assistant to deputy? Was, was there kind of any transition with that? Or is it, is it another one of those where you were kind of doing the job already and they, they were like, hey, I guess this title should match what you're actually doing. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was doing the job already, but me and my big mouth, when I go and have <laughs> brainstorming sessions with my boss, I'm thinking of things and me and her bouncing ideas off of each other. And we're like, oh, you know, government is starting to look different, especially after COVID. And I'm like, yeah, you know, organizational development. And she was like, oh, yeah, by the way, <laughs> and we're bouncing ideas off of each other. And she's like, OK, I want to incorporate this. But of course, incorporating something new. And, you know, customer service and everything, that means, you know, bigger roles. So yeah. I was very grateful to be promoted. But, of course, that came with new duties. <laughs> More work, yeah. <laughs> More work, <laughs> which I love. But then also it had a chance for us to do a little succession planning as well. So mm-hmm. um, my boss is no secret that she's like, I'm retiring at this age at this time. Yeah. I love what I do. But, of course, when it's time to retire, she, she wants to retire And so when I was promoted to deputy, we bought in an assistant Mm. city manager and we were able to promote internally. So she's our assistant city manager and serves as the CFO as well. So it helped create that pipeline for secession and to set up those positions to already be in the city manager's office. So we went from two to three, but um, Douglasville just has, well, we still have so much going on. We have a lot of dirt moving, a lot of projects, a lot of new things we're trying to implement so promoting me and getting new roles under me and new people, as well as now having an assistant city manager to relieve um, our city manager from doing some of the things and being t- directly like being able to focus directly on mayor and council a lot mm. also assisted us with that role and transition. So I got a couple of new things, but then we also increased the city manager's office to three people instead of two. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. To help with that. Yeah. That's the danger of brainstorming. You know, you'll end up with more work if you're not careful. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's, but it's good. It, yeah. It's good. But yeah, like you said, you end up saying, oh, that's a great idea. And Why I don't you to- run with it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So how did you um, get like navigate? So uh, I'm glad you brought up the city manager and, and the assistant. Like, so um, kind of in, in your role as deputy, how did you navigate kind of 
you know, what the city manager needed out of, out of you and your position and what the organization needs, like, how, what is that kind of like kind of navigating that? Like, Hey, this city manager leads in this way. And so that means I need to be like this or like, or did you even, or, or, or yeah. How did you guys kind of work together to figure out kind of your role within the organization? Yeah. Um, I think one of the ways that we work together to make sure that our roles were good, um, it's, it, So I'm I'm good at a lot of things. So and one of the things that I am good or that I had experience with working with is um, community relations. So Mm -hmm. I've done in the past, I've done events. Um, Of course, I'm a millennial, so I'm good working with technology and IT. So some of the things just came naturally for me. Of course, I was I, I got departments that I had to really like study and focus on because it wasn't a um, it wasn't something that I was used to. Um, coming easily for me, mm-hmm. but we were just, I think she sat down and she was strategic saying, okay, these four departments kind of work well with each other. So yeah. with me having community relations and IT and conference center and tourism and economic development, when you think of those four departments, they are working to promote the city. So mm-hmm. we have a conference center, we have tourism, economic development to bring businesses. Community relations has the graphics and the social media campaigns to do all that. And you can't do all that without IT. Mm-hmm. So we were strategic at like putting all of my departments that I um, that I oversee, we, we put them together. Like it makes sense for me to directly oversee them. Yeah. So one department isn't reporting to the city manager and I'm still having to kind of direct that department director because they are, they're, they're reporting directly to the city manager. So it made sense. At first, I'm like, uh, well, what if, why don't I have it? Because people always ask, because you can ask around to many assistants and many deputies, and we we all have different yeah. departments. Mm-hmm. But to to me now, it made sense for me to have those because they directly work with each other. They work well, so it makes sense to have just one uh, deputy city manager overseeing mm-hmm. them instead of like spacing them out and kind of like sharing them with the city manager. Yeah, yeah. Well, and to not to put words in your mouth, but it sounds like it's a little bit of a reflection of your interest and skill set, and then the things that the organization needs, and that these things need to and have to work together well in order to yes. be successful. Is that fair? Yeah. Yes, definitely. Yeah. What about you know adding that assistant in? I imagine that changed the dynamic a little bit. How has have you guys kind of navigated you know especially the two of you your roles in supporting the city manager and the organization, and then kind of like how you divide and, and think about your work. Yeah, so um, another organic change. So she was the finance director, and so she became assistant city manager, but she still serves in that finance director role, so dual Mm -hmm. role. And so, of course, what works with finance? HR. Mm -hmm. (laughs) What also works with finance? Court, because of tickets and fines. Mm -hmm. So it just made, and then she also um, is going to start a customer service division. So when you get courts, because you're working with people every day in HR, you're onboarding people, customer service and yeah. finance, because you have like yeah. taxes and everything to pay. And so it, it just all made sense organically for her to be to oversee those. And then for us, I mean, we've worked together, they've worked together for probably about 20 years. I've worked together oh, wow. for about yeah. <laughs> I've worked together, I worked with them for about eight years, but it's still very, very organic. It's a good system when I, one day I'm going to ask my city manager, hey, how did you think to like promote our finance director to assistant city manager and know yeah. that it was going to work so well? I guess that's why she's so good at her job. Yeah. But yeah. it just worked. Um, yeah. The best way I can just put this is we've just been very fortunate. I'm yeah. lucky. Yeah. Because um, I know it doesn't work this way in every government. You can promote someone. It can just be a catastrophe from day one because of personalities. But I also also going back to I think I mentioned this in the beginning, just all three of us love public service. Yeah. So we're gonna do what it takes to make sure that it works and we work together to carry out the common good for yeah. our residents. So it's like if it didn't work, we're gonna make it work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, I love that. Yeah. If you guys all have that goal in common, that makes it easier. <laughs> yeah, and that I mean that that another you hit the nail on the head. When you look at the end goal or that common goal, if you're all working to achieve that, 
everything else is history. Everything yeah. else will go well and fall in line. Yeah, it's all details after that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's it. <laughs> Were there any skills that you felt like you had to work on in kind of this role or, or that, you know, you felt like um, you needed to develop as, as becoming a, a deputy city manager? So not necessarily deputy city manager, but for assistant city manager, for, for sure. Um, just being a supervisor over department directors. So Mm -hmm. having to hone in on like better communication skills and being more Mm -hmm. direct about what needs to be accomplished. So because I am in that role that, you know, helps achieve achieve those goals. So I have to learn how to be more direct and Mm -hmm. I can brainstorm with you. But at the end of the day, we do have to make sure that it falls under that vision. So I I took a lot of classes in the beginning or a lot of trainings just to make sure like my communication skills to be able to communicate different objectives would be good and how, and how to necessarily do that when managing different people. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Um, Any like takeaways from that training that helped you or examples that that you could share? Um, Probably one of the main takeaways is, no, no matter who you're managing or communicating to, make sure everyone is on board. Mm. Kind of going back to what I said yeah, earlier. Yeah. Is, yeah, making sure everyone understands and everyone is on board. And sometimes ensuring that everyone understands isn't necessarily just saying, hey, you understand this, right? <laughs> and they say yes. Sometimes it's, hey, let's start off this first step and I'm going to start with you. Mm. And then um, once I see that you're good and you have the right footing, then I will take it back a little bit and then I'll let you go ahead and succeed on this project. Yeah. Yeah. Because a lot of times being a being a manager, I'm thinking, OK, I'm just, you know, directing them and telling them this is your goal. And boom, that's it. Like, hey, do the budget. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and yeah. that's it. But sometimes with some people, and I totally get, you have to say, okay, hey, time for us to do the budget. All right, let's look at our spending from last year. Yeah. And see what happened and what that looks like and what we should project for next year, whether we need to reduce or whether we can actually, we're going to get more revenue so we can add to the budget. And sometimes it, it takes making that first step with yeah. that individual. Yeah. Well, yeah, like what you said earlier, where you can't manage everybody the same. You got to kind of use your your emotional intelligence to be like, what what does this person need, and yeah, and helping them along. That makes mm-hmm. that makes total sense. Yeah, and I think my last thing that I took from that was the way that one person manages maybe mm-hmm. isn't the way. So, I mean, give an example. So, of course, my supervisor, she was a city manager. Um, when she stepped into her role, there was not an assistant that was helping her, and I wasn't there. I came in as the operations manager, then moved up. So she managed like all thirteen department directors. Yeah. And then I I got four or five, and so in my head at first, since this is my first ACM role, and I'm getting these individuals, oh, I have to manage these people exactly how my boss managed them. Ah, yeah. And that might was a mistake at first for me. Yeah. And so even, you know, I talked about going in with those meetings with them initially. And I just remember going in a little bit with them. And of course, I was very genuine. But in my head, I'm like, oh, they were they're used to being managed this way. So let me make sure I go in and manage them this way or or be this type of manager to them because that is what they're used to. And that's when after taking some trainings and actually just coming to a realization is, I'm my own manager and the way I manage individuals will always be different from what somebody else, how somebody else manages that person. Yeah. And that's okay. Yeah. Yeah, And that's that's definitely okay. Cause we're all, we're all different. Yeah. Oh, interesting. That's really good advice. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And and being okay with it. I like you saying that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. And it's okay that I manage differently from someone else. It's okay. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, is there anything that's kind of surprised you, you know, being being in this role, either, you know, your first transition assistant or in this expanded role as deputy or uh, anything that surprised you about taking on this role or in, in the work that you do? Um, and I always say this and this is look, I have to put like that caution sign up yeah. because <laughs> um, I always say this, but maybe the people. So yeah. the people are the best thing about my job. But then also managing people, it can be a task. Yeah. 
And I think that's the one thing when I stepped into an assistant role and truly managing people um, and being, you know, at the level I am in the organization is that, wow, it, it managing people is not, I, I think, you know, social media and people glorify like being a boss and being a director yeah. and being at the top of the food chain, but no one truly talks about how tough it is to actually manage people. Yeah. So it's not saying that I don't enjoy managing because I love managing people, but it is one of my tasks. I know I talked about my roles and responsibilities, and I guess I should have said managing people at the top Mm. because it's, of course, it's managing like the managers and my directors, but of course I have citizens as well. Yeah. And I have to manage expectations. Yeah. And that's one of the larger things of managing. You have to manage people, but you have to manage the expectations of those people as well. So I think that's the one thing that has surprised me um, is that because, like I said, social media glorifies like being a boss and everything, but don't glorify like or they don't tell you about the actual role of or the obstacles that you have to go through to actually do it. <laughs> um. And, you know, I, I think you've, you've given a lot of great advice in some of your answers already, but is, do you have any advice for folks that are, are looking to make that transition to becoming an assistant or a deputy like, like you have? Um, I would say, so anyone looking to become an assistant or a deputy, so I always say that I'm a generalist. I like to know a little bit about a lot. Yeah, yeah. And I like to touch everything. <laughs> but if you are a department director looking to go into an assistant or a deputy role, ensure that you're willing to expand um, what you're doing day to day. And you and just know that you won't be able to hone in on what you're used to. If you're in finance, you're going to have to let a lot of the responsibilities go as being the Mm. finance director, because now you have a broader scope to oversee more departments and more Mm. responsibility. So if that is what you truly love, maybe at this time, assistant and being an assistant or deputy may not be the time for you. But if it is, just know that hope, just know and, you know, be ready and be prepared to let some of that responsibility go. Yeah. Um, And then if you're an assistant, because you don't have to be a department director, of course, to move into that role. I wasn't. Um, But if you're just like an assistant too, or just someone that's looking to move up into the city manager's office, you know, being an an assistant, um, just make sure that you, you know, exactly what the role entails. Mm. It, it's a lot of managing individuals, but it's nothing that you can't do. Yeah. So, um, I always tell people to take that big leap and then listen to the people around you. I, I, I wouldn't say that maybe, maybe I wasn't ready, but I listened to the people around me and they told me I was ready. So I had cheerleaders around me saying, oh, you can do the job. You can do the job with no, like, no doubt. You can do the job with your eyes closed. And I'm like, oh, wow, they're seeing something in me that I believe in in myself. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, and that has helped me grow. I had, I didn't say that before, but having cheerleaders around you and having the people around you that really believe in you and want to see your growth, that is the number one thing that has you know, been an asset to me and, mm. and being an asset to me being promoted into these roles is the people around me. Yeah. No, that's a, I love that. That's great. Um, well, awesome. Well, um, we're approaching the end of our time together, but uh, what's next? What are you working on that, uh, or th- what's going on in Douglasville that our, our listeners should look out for and, and uh, check in on? Oh, we are. So my, the best project I've done thus far is the Douglasville Town Green. Yeah. And it has a amphitheater. It seats about 2,500 people. We had the grand opening concert and Gladys Knight came in oh, September. Cool. We had Gladys Knight, Boney James, and we had Leanne Rhymes. And those are three concerts back to back and they were wonderful. This spring we're gearing up and we have Robin Thicke. We have Casey and the Sunshine Band, and we have Rebirth Brass Band that's coming in the spring. So I'm very excited about those concerts. It's, we've never had like a concert venue or amphitheater. It's also a park, and it's a it's a great park. We've all we've won so many awards for it thus far, and it's only been open for about six months. So if you're ever around Douglasville, check out Eventbrite for some of the concert tickets, and they're they're great concerts. And then also we just have. Um, a lot of renovations and a lot of things that we're doing 
in, in our government facilities just to help our residents. So we're renovating another park and we're trying to create these walking trails and, you know, doing other things, renovating buildings and facilities. And we're bringing on these great programs as well. So like we have Citizens Academy that I oversee that we've done um, over the last seven or eight years when I first started. And it's an awesome program, about 10 yeah. weeks for residents to, you know, learn and grow and know about the city of Douglasville. So if anybody's in that area, I would love for them to join Citizens Academy. Awesome. So that's one thing. And then I'm bringing on organizational development. That's a new thing okay. in local government. Um, it's kind of the opposite a little bit, like I said, of HR. So I'm excited to bring on that new division in the upcoming months and just start to help create that culture. Culture is so yeah. important for retaining employees. So that's probably my number one. I know I said a, a lot of things on my list, but that's probably the most exciting thing because I want to create that culture and help retain employees and help grow them. Yeah. Awesome. No, that's really cool. We'll have to have you back once you stand up that, that organizational development group and, and check in on the progress. That's cool. Oh, yeah. I would love to come back and talk about that very exciting project. Very cool. Well, not very often they get to start a new you know, d- department function division um, from scratch. So but lots of opportunity there. Very cool. Um, so our last question on GovLove is always the hardest. Um, if, you be the Gov, <laughs> if you could be the GovLove DJ, what song would you pick as the exit music for this episode? Oh, you know what? Bruno Mars, 24 Magic, or Uptown Funk. You can pick which one. Those are upbeat songs. 24 Carats or Uptown Funk, you yeah. Uptown Funk, you yeah. <laughs> I love it. Those are perfect. We'll let our DJ pick between those uh, those two. Yes. Bruno Mars. Look, or anything that he can think of. It's yeah, or any of the other artists or songs that you've mentioned. <laughs> yeah, any yeah, any song. I like Drake. I like Usher. Bruno Mars is good. Um, yeah. Well, that's perfect. Well, Chelsea, that, that ends our episode for today. Thank you so much for coming on and talking with me. I really appreciate you taking the time and, and sharing uh, all about your your experience and, and kind of uh, and your work. So thank you so much. Thank you so much, Ben. It's been a pleasure. This was really, really fun. Yeah, good. And for our listeners, GovLove is brought to you by engaging local government leaders. And the best way to support GovLove is to become an ELGL member. You can reach us online at ELGL.org backslash GovLove or on LinkedIn. You can go give us our, our page a follow at GovLove Podcast. And subscribe to GovLove on your favorite podcast app. And if you're already subscribed, go tell a friend, a colleague about this podcast. Help us spread the word that GovLove is the go-to place for local government stories. And with that, thank you for listening. This has been GovLove, a podcast about local government.